station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? I am ready for the event. Sweetness. KSTP TV, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Tim Sherna with KSTP TV. How do you hear me? Hello, Tim. I have you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. Hi, Karen. Minnesota says hello. Hello to your, everybody in Minnesota. What are your responsibilities? What's the job up there that you're doing this time around? We have a lot going on. There's, uh, of course, right now the space station is mostly built, and all of us like to spend as much time as possible on science. Um, so that's one of our major jobs. But of course, we have the daily activities of maintenance, uh, keeping the station up and running, just like you have maintenance in your home. And uh, we also have uh, visiting vehicles. We've had a number of vehicles come and visit us and bring us cargo and supplies. And uh, so we had to spend a lot of time unloading the cargo and loading those vehicles with trash. And uh, there's, during our increment, we had a couple spacewalks where my crewmates went out um, to repair some things and uh, change out components outside. So we've had a lot going on. I have to say, nice hair. What's life like in, in zero gravity? Is it fun? It is a blast. And it, actually, after being here as long as I've been here now, it, it becomes a little commonplace, uh, the, the way everything behaves in space and the way you move around. And it is fun. It's, it's awfully fun to um, start at one end of the space station and try and get going as fast as you can and swing around the corners using handrails. And uh, you can have a lot of fun. So you guys actually do get between the long schedules of work. We do get some off time. We have a, we usually work daytimes uh, about seven in the morning till seven at night or during the weekdays. And then we have weekends uh, mostly off. We do some uh, housekeeping on Saturdays to keep the, the filters clean and the walls clean. And, uh, but Saturday afternoon and, and all of Sunday usually is free time where we can uh, do, do whatever we want. I went and looked at your tweets. You've sent some amazing pictures back down to us here at Earth, uh, on Earth. Uh, do you ever get tired of the view out the window up there? What are some of your favorite things you've seen? You never do get tired of it. You know, I, actually, every time I'm working out on our resistive exercise device, it's right below the cupola. And my workouts generally take a little longer than they need to because I'm constantly going up to take a peek. And there's so many beautiful things. I love to see um, the mountains, uh, white uh, snow-capped mountains are just incredible to see the depth of them that you can see from this, um, from this altitude. And the, it's amazing. The, the Earth really is a lot of water. You start traveling over oceans, and you just wonder if you're ever going to get to land. Um, sunrises and sunsets are absolutely incredible. I could watch those over and over. There's just a lot of spectacular things to see. I looked at your uh, current orbit, and it appears to me that you're between South America and Africa right now. When you're flying over North America, if you do, over home, do you look down and and, uh, and, and uh, the folks here in Minnesota, the folks back home in Vining? I do. I like to. We actually haven't been over a daytime pass of the United States in a while, but I think our orbit's going to start taking us there again. Uh, the first time I was able to see uh, my hometown area in central Minnesota was pretty special, and that was a couple months ago now, I believe. And I actually got a picture of the, the lakes area where I grew up, and uh, that was pretty neat to see. I have to ask you, a legend has it you can see the Mall of America from space. Is that possible? Gosh, that's a good question. I, I don't know. Um, perhaps with uh, binoculars or a, or a zoom lens on your camera, I'm not sure about uh, with the naked eye. You know, clearly you're an inspiration to, to so many uh, young men and, and young women uh, around the world. But here at home, in Minnesota, what would you say to the boys and girls here back home in Minnesota who are students? Uh, what message would you have for them as, as they're in school and trying to figure out what they can do and what their potential is? Well, first, 
just it's important that every every kid knows that they have a lot of potential everybody but everybody has different skills and talents and everybody has different interests and there are so many opportunities and so many things that these kids could be doing and all you need to do is figure out what it is you like and uh, work really hard at it and it's going to take you far especially in school when you work hard even if you're not a straight-a student if you work hard your teachers and, and others can tell that you're working hard and if you're getting the best grades you can you're going to go far and you're going to be able to do a lot of different things with your life when you think back to your childhood uh, in minnesota in vining is there a minnesota memory anything you can think of that that was the, the beginning of the inspiration that helped you get where you are right now I don't know. I, I decided that I wanted to be an astronaut when I was pretty young, and I, I don't honestly know exactly where that, where that thought came from and, and how I decided that that's what I wanted to do. But certainly, certainly the, the education I got, I went to a very small high school, and I think that was very good for me. Um, you know, academic-wise, we didn't have a lot of the classes that, that students that I started in college with had in other schools, but I was able to catch up very easily with that. But being from a small town and going to a small school, I participated in everything that I could. I played on all the sports teams, and I was in, uh, sang in the choir and played in the band. And I think if I had been in a large school, I probably didn't have the abilities to do all of that. And so I think for me, it was, it was very advantageous, and it taught me um, teamwork, being on teams, um, playing, uh, playing along in groups. Um, so I think, uh, I think that part of it was very, very beneficial for me. Next time you're, you're back in Minnesota, back in the state, what's the first thing you want to do? I'm sorry, you were broken up. Can you ask one more time? Next time you're back in Minnesota going back home, visit family, or, or what's the first thing you want to do when you come back here to Minnesota? Well, I always look forward to going back. I grew up on a lake, East Battle Lake, and uh, my parents still live in that same house. And I, I don't know the last time I was swimming in that lake. And that was obviously something that I did every single summer, day in and day out. And so... Um, I'd love to do that again. Uh, of course, have to time it the two months out of the year, or whatever it is. <laughs> that's a possibility. But uh, and I'd like to be able to take my son and and uh, have him go fishing like I used to do off the dock and and that sort of thing. We can't see your feet right now. What's holding you in place? I'm hanging onto a handrail with my toes as we speak. And if I let go, I will float away. <laughs> so you actually use your feet a lot for translating. In fact, I'm develop developing calluses on the tops of my feet. Um, but that's just kind of a difference uh, of living in space. If I could ask you for a little uh, visual treat for zero gravity, could you spin your microphone or something that just shows us some of the magic of where you are right now? Do you oh, have I can any spin idea? myself. <laughs> Do you have any idea how cool that is? It is cool. And like I said, it after you're here a while, it kind of becomes commonplace, and you almost forget just how neat it is. So um, I wish everybody could experience it. We have a minute left. Uh, in that minute, if you could tell us, uh, what do you look forward to when you go back to Earth as far as, like, for example, do you miss gravity? What's something that, that, that you miss when you're up there? I, th I think gravity is going to be my enemy for a few days or a few weeks or maybe even a couple months when I get back. But uh, I miss my family, uh, my husband and my son. I miss them dearly, so... I'm really looking forward to getting back to them and to my home. Well, you can't see me, but I'm waving goodbye. It was a great thrill to talk to you. Thank you so much. It was great to talk to you. Station, this is Houston ACR. Karen, that concludes the KSTB, KSTP TV portion of the event. Thank you. Mike, please stand by for a voice check from the yeah, Big right. Ten Network. Station, this is Rick Pisa with the Big Ten Network. How do you hear me? Rick Pisa with the Big Ten Network. How do you hear me? 
And Rick, I hear you loud and clear. This is Mike Hopkins from the International Space Station. Great, Mike. We're just about to get started. Great, Mike. We're just about to get started. Perfect. And Mike, this is Houston ACR. If you could please turn your microphone off after you We are answer. happy to be joined by Howard Griffith, one of Mike's former teammates at the University of Illinois. And Howard, since Mike is now at the International Space Station, yes. let's, let's not waste any more time. Let's <laughs> welcome not. in Mike Hopkins from the International Space Station. Well, Mike, let's give the folks a little bit of background. I know you left from a cosmodrome in Kazakhstan about a month or so ago. You're supposed to be at the ISS until spring of 2014. What is life like for someone when you're aboard the International Space Station? Well, it's absolutely incredible, and I even today I've been here for about uh, three weeks, I guess now, and I, I still have to pinch myself because sometimes it's hard to believe that I'm here. Uh, and it's it takes a little while to get into a normal routine up here. You know, we're we're working from about seven to seven every day, uh, Monday through Friday, and uh, and so on the weekends as well. Uh, we have to clean up, and and then we get a little bit of free time usually on Sundays, maybe to watch a little bit of football, but. Uh, you know, what's really amazing about up here is you're just floating around, and, and that's an incredible experience, incredible feeling. Mike, what was it like when you first entered the International Space Station? Well, actually, it was, uh, it was a little bit overwhelming, and uh, to be honest, my gyros were still spinning a little bit from the launch. Uh, when I first got up into, into microgravity, into the space environment, I felt like I was falling and uh, like I was sitting on the ceiling and falling. And uh, when I first got into the space station and, and we had our uh, chance to talk with the families, I actually felt like I was leaning on my side like that. And so it took uh, probably about 18 hours before that feeling started to go away, but uh, absolutely incredible feeling. So talk to me about some of the experiments and some of the science that you're working on while you're there. Yeah, actually, there's quite a bit of science going on on the space station right now, and some of it we're very involved in uh, because we're the guinea pigs. So, in fact, this morning I was drawing some blood just to see how the uh, immune system in the body changes uh, in microgravity. Other experiments I was also working on this morning was a capillary flow experiment, which is looking at how water uh, flows up the walls of different vessels, and uh, maybe you can use that to move uh, move liquids around in space and, and also uh, separate it from, from gases. And so those are just a couple of the uh, hundreds of experiments that we're doing or that are going on up here on a, on a daily, weekly basis. Now, Mike, your job obviously makes you very unique in terms of former Big Ten football players and what they're now doing with their life, but I know you stay in touch with the Illinois football program. I know from your Twitter handle, at Astro Illini, you sometimes send out messages to current and former Illinois players. How much do you actually get to still follow your alma mater when you're up in space? I'm actually very fortunate. Not, in fact, all the astronauts are very fortunate up here is because we have a, a large support uh, organization on the ground that helps us stay in touch with our families and stay in touch with uh, the the organizations that are important to us. And so I actually get the Illinois football games are sent up to me uh, every week, so I don't get to see them live. Uh, but uh, while I'm working out, I usually uh, get to watch them. I love it. The fact that he's in space and he's still Great working stuff. out, Rick, that, that's incredible. What are some of the things you do during the off time when you're down on the Saturdays and Sundays beside watching Illinois football? Is there anything else? Uh, no, actually, that's a, it's a good chance for us to, to catch up on. Uh, it's a good chance for us to catch up on uh, emails. We can uh, take a lot of photos or more opportunities to take photos that we may not have during the week because uh, we are busy inside uh, with experiments and just taking care of the station. And then it's an also it's a good chance we uh, have to get to talk to the family. And so uh, once a week I get to talk to Julie and the boys, and uh, it's, it's very special because it's actually a video conference, so you get to see their face. Well, how much fun has it been, particularly for your boys that are, that are young, growing up, seeing their dad on the International Space Station and having a chance to communicate with them? I guess they're the most popular kids in school. 
Well, I, I like to think they're the most popular kids in school uh, because of themselves and not and not their dad. Um, and as you can imagine, uh, the kids are the the kids are very busy right now. I've got one in high school and one in junior high, and and so they keep pretty busy with uh, school and sports and church and. And so, uh, you know, sometimes the days go by and, and we don't have a chance to talk. And, and so uh, it's very nice to catch up with them on the weekend. Mike, when did you know that this was something that you wanted to pursue, not just aerospace engineering and your studies at Illinois, but when did you actually know and feel like you had the possibility to be part of an astronaut class that was going to spend time in space? Well, I actually decided or knew that I wanted to try and be an astronaut back in high school, even before I went to the University of Illinois. Uh, but you never know if uh, you're going to have that opportunity. Uh, you have to get a little bit lucky. Uh, things have to fall into into, uh, into line for you. And, and it just happened, so happened that it did for me. And I feel very blessed, feel very fortunate to have this opportunity to be here. You know, you had a very interesting uh, defensive back coach, Coach Bernstein. Are there any lessons that he taught you that you were able to use uh, going through life to get you to where you are now? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, uh, the coaches, Coach Bernstein, Coach Tepper, uh, Coach Makovic, all of them had uh, a big influence on us. And uh, with Coach Bernstein, I think uh, was was certainly, you know, he had a certain fire about him, a certain drive about him, and uh, that's contagious. And and that certainly helps when you're when you're trying to pursue something that uh, sometimes can be tough to reach. You know, Mike, I, I always think back to our times at Illinois, particularly when we were on the practice squad and we were getting banged around. We were kind of the practice dummies uh, for the guys that were starting. And the one thing that always stuck out to me about you is that you continued to go out and play as hard as you could. And we knew then that you were a special player and would be special to the University of Illinois, but had no idea that you'd be able to really accomplish what you have now. And I just want to tell you that you've truly been an inspiration to all of us including, you know, the people around the world. You inspire a lot of us, and we appreciate everything that you're doing for the country. Well, Howard, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I remember you ever being on the practice squad, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's, it's fun just to be a part of it. <laughs> It's fun just to be a part of a team like that and an organization like that and around guys like you. I mean, uh, you know, one of the things I always wanted to be when I grew up was a professional uh, football player. And uh, so, you know, uh, hats off to you and the other guys that made it to the big leagues. And uh, that's, that's, you know, very positive influence to be around you guys. Colonel Mike Hopkins joining us from the International Space Station. Colonel Hopkins, thanks so much for the time and enjoy the rest of your time on the ISS. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, you know, I just want to let you guys know that there's still a little uh, orange and blue up here. If you can see, uh, if you can see that, <laughs> we love it, Hoppy. We love it. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, KSTP TV and Big Ten Network Station. We are now resuming operational audio communications.